Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video we will talk about endometriosis and adenomyosis. In the first part of the video we will talk about endometriosis, after that about adenomyosis and then we will compare them and talk about the similarities and differences. Endometriosis is a chronic disease in which endometrial tissue is found outside the uterine cavity. This tissue is, as the endometrial tissue within the uterine cavity, undergoing changes throughout the menstrual cycle, depending on the changes of the hormones. Nowadays, it is thought that one in 10 women is affected by endometriosis. It appears that there is a familial predisposition for the development. The exact cause of the disease is unknown, but there are different theories for how the endometrial tissue gets to locations throughout the entire body. The first theory is the theory of retrograde menstruation. Here it is thought that the endometrial tissue that is shed during the menstrual bleeding flows back into the pelvis where the endometrial tissue implants and continues to grow and proliferate. Another theory is that endometrial tissue is brought to other places iatrogenically, so during a surgery or medical examination. Another theory is the theory of metaplasia. Here it is thought that due to immunologic or hormonal factors, cells that were not supposed to become endometrial tissue change their path of differentiation and eventually turn into endometrial cell aggregates. The next theory is the theory of oxidative stress and inflammation, where it is thought that immune cells produce cytokines that promote the growth and differentiation of cells into endometrial cells. The second to last theory says that there is an immune dysfunction which prevents the elimination of menstrual tissue from the body and so promotes the implantation of the tissue at other sites. The last theory is the stem cell theory, where it is thought that undifferentiated cells develop into endometrial tissue and regenerate and proliferate into cell masses. The symptoms of endometriosis can differ greatly. Some patients may be asymptomatic and for those patients who experience symptoms, they often depend on the localization of the endometrial tissue. Common symptoms include pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea, so especially painful menstruation, or also especially heavy menstruation, dyspareunia, which is pain during intercourse, and some might experience infertility, or also pain during bowel movements or urination. As I said earlier, in endometriosis, there is endometrial tissue outside the uterine cavity. The exact location can differ and can be divided into different types. The first type is endometriosis genitalis interna. Here, there's endometrial tissue within the uterus, but outside the uterine mucous membrane. This includes the myometrium and the fallopian tubes. Adenomyosis, which we will talk about later, is part of this classification. The next type is endometriosis genitalis externa, where endometrial tissue is found within the genitals but outside the uterus. This includes the ovaries, the vagina and the pouch of Douglas. The last type is endometriosis extragenitalis, so endometriosis outside of the genital tract as for example in the intestines, bladder, lungs or muscles. 
To diagnose a patient with endometriosis, we have to obtain a thorough medical history and see if the patient's symptoms indicate a diagnosis with endometriosis. After that, we have to do a diagnostic laparoscopy to rule out other diseases and to be able to take biopsies of the areas where we suspect endometrial tissue to be found. The average time between the first symptoms and the diagnosis is 10 years. The therapy aims to prevent the progression of the extrauterine endometrial tissue through the phases of the menstrual cycle and so to continue to bleed in locations where it causes complaints to the patient. Usually the patient is given progestin to achieve an atrophy of the endometrial tissue outside of the normal location. Another medication that is used are GnRH analogs as those will essentially put the ovaries in a rest mode and so the menstrual cycle is put at rest and the monthly bleeding of the tissue will not occur. If the medication is contraindicated or medication does not lead to the decrease of the complaints, a surgery is to be considered. In the, in the surgery, the endometrial tissue is treated with electrocoagulation or heat coagulation. Also often a combination therapy is used where the patient has to undergo surgery but also has to take either a progestin or a GnRH analog. Adenomyosis is part of endometriosis. It is the occurrence of endometrial tissue inside the myometrium. So when we recap the structure of the wall of the uterus, the endometrium is lying furthest inside. After that, there's the muscular myometrium and furthest outside lies the perimetrium. This tissue change often leads to dysmenorrhea, so especially painful menstruation, as well as especially heavy menstruation called menorrhagia. In some patients, it is evident that the uterus is thickened and enlarged by the accumulation of endometrial tissue and blood in the myometrial layer. It is thought that adenomyosis is frequently undiagnosed for many years and research suggests that, that as many as 20 to 65 percent of women may be affected depending on the age groups considered. Adenomyosis can occur in adolescents and nulliparous women, so women that never had children, but it occurs most frequently in women between the ages of 35 and 50 who have had at least one pregnancy. It also often co-occurs with endometriosis and uterine fibroids. Unfortunately, the cause for adenomyosis is unknown. Adenomyosis is usually diagnosed by the use of a transvaginal sonography or an MRI. In some cases, also a laparoscopic examination is done to exclude a concomitant occurrence of endometriosis. The therapy is similar to the therapy in endometriosis, so the use of medication to prevent the regular menstrual cycle and so to alleviate the symptoms of the diffusely found endometrial tissue. Also, a surgical therapy can be considered in which a hysterectomy is usually the surgical approach of choice. This is, however, usually considered after the women's wish for further children is fulfilled. In patients with adenomyosis or endometriosis, your blood iron levels should be checked regularly as more heavy menstrual bleedings or more diffusely found endometrial tissue can lead to an iron deficiency anemia. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you like our channel, please subscribe. It means a lot to us. Thank you very much.